What's up, rollers? Let's make ben Jennifer. Benifer. Benifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. One more time. Let's make Yennefer. Yennefer's a super diverse character. She's got a lot of stuff she can do. Giggity. So if you want to play her in D&D, we're going to take it by how the player's handbook outlines things. We're going to go race, class, stats, and background. She gets a lot of her abilities from her race. She has elven blood, so we're going to go half-elf. And we're going to do the variant half-elf from Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, which gives you the option of foregoing your skill versatility for something like high elf weapon training, because we've seen her use uh, daggers and swords and she's fought in combat, so she has some ability there. Being a half elf also gives you a plus two to charisma and two floating plus ones. We're gonna put those floating plus ones in intelligence and constitution. Even though she's only quarter elven, half elf still fits really well thematically, so that's the closest thing we found in D&D. And now going on to the actual classes, um, we're gonna go from one to 20, and we're gonna try and keep two stuff that's wi official Wizards of the Coast. So we're gonna be doing 14 levels of Wild Magic Sorcerer and six levels of Evocation Wizard. So the reason why we wanted to do this was based on the magic system that is in the Witcher setting where it's chaos is, gi is given order, we use the Wild Magic Sorcerer to explain the uncontrolled emotions that she has that make up the chaos and the fact that the elven blood that she does have increases the potency of that magic from said chaos. And then during her time in Artuza, where she's studying magic and honing her chaos under the tutelage of Tessaia Devry, we're going to be using the six levels of Evocation Wizard to explain that. For stats, Yennefer's highest stat is going to be Charisma, since she is a sorcerer at heart. A lot of her magic is sort of in her blood, and she just eventually learns how to control it. And plus, as a sorcerer, you're going to want to have high Charisma so that you can have powerful sorcerer spells. But Yennefer is also clearly persuasive. Um, she's witty, she's influential, she seems to have a way of at least manipulating people to do things that she wants. So that's another aspect of having high Charisma. Next is going to come Intelligence, because she has studied extensively. She has spent years in an academy with a bunch of other sorcerers and mages and wizards. Um, so for her Intelligence, she does seem to have a good memory for spells. She knows how to manipulate herbs. She knows how to talk with different dealers and things like that. She knows what she wants. She knows what she's asking for. There's a good deal of Intelligence there. For Constitution, we've seen several times that she's pretty tough. She foregoes the healing herbs, or the, the numbing herbs, actually, when she becomes... Yennefer as we know her when she gets sculpted. We've also seen her get stabbed by a fellow mage with an arrow and then proceed to cast one of her most powerful spells, or if not the most powerful spell she's ever casted, so clearly she can take a beating. Towards the bottom of her list is going to start with Dexterity. She's quick on her feet in fighting and she can dodge abilities and she clearly knows her footwork. She's not exactly adept in it as, say, Geralt. Second to last, we're going to go Wisdom. This is mainly supportive of the fact that she makes very rash decisions and she is hell-bent on power. Mm -hmm. She would sacrifice just about anything to achieve it as we saw multiple times throughout the show. Mm -hmm. Last but not least is going to be strength. It's going to be, I guess you could call the dump stat uh, because mages are not typically strong in that aspect and mm -hmm. even throughout the show she is seen to have a, a very slim build. This is a priority list that you would want to go through if you're building Yennefer. If you are using a standard array to build her, this is an example of what it would look like to start. For background, we're going to go Sage because she, she was magical before she went to the Academy, but she really came into her own while studying with Tessaia de Vries. This background is also going to give you the skills of Arcana and History. Makes perfect sense. She studied with a bunch of mages. She's going to know a bunch of different stuff. Next off, we're going to get into the levels. For the very first level, to explain the surge of chaos that she has, for example, in the bar incident, would be the best way to compare to D&D of her first glimpse of wild magic. Mm -hmm. We're going to take one level of sorcerer and we're going to pick the wild magic sorcerer's origin. This is also going to give us the start of our spellcasting and tides of chaos. And on top of that, we're going to be taking deception and persuasion for our additional skills due to the fact that she does know how to manipulate people and lies a lot to get what she wants. And if she's not, when she is manipulating, she is very persuasive, not only with her words, but for obvious reasons. Damn! And as we said before, regarding wild magic, 
with that quarter elf blood in her increasing the potency this also helps represent the discovery of her power and leads back to that bloodline so after her first experience with magic and sort of getting marked by the the portal she created she studies with to say degree so for the next six levels we're going to do wizard we're going to do evocation wizard you're going to get a few things from this the main reason we picked evocation wizard here is because of that main scene toward the end when she casts her super powerful fire spell, you can see the fire kind of swimming around Saya. You're going to get Sculpt Spells as an Evocation Wizard, which allows you to protect allies when you cast an area of effect. We see this really clearly at the end when she casts her super powerful fire spell and Taseya is unharmed. During these levels, you're also going to get an ability score improvement. We would recommend taking it into Charisma, bumping it all the way up to 20, and then after that, going into Constitution, continue to emphasize that strength. And if you're using Standard Array, that would be plus two Charisma. You also get Potent Cantrip. It's kind of just a ribbon ability at this point, but it could represent her search for power. After Wizard, we're going to go the remainder of our levels. 9 to 20 is going to be Sorcerer. You're going to start off, you're going to get Font of Magic. Then you're going to get two of three upgrades of Meta Magic. This is to explain her furthering her control over Chaos. Three ability score improvements. As Nate said earlier, you want to bump that charisma up to 20 as fast as you can. Otherwise, go into Constitution. If you're using the standard array, at 12, I would recommend going plus one charisma, plus one con. At 16, I would take the feat Warcaster because it displays Yennefer's ability to cast magic under duress mm -hmm. and when she's in combat. And we see that a lot. Mm -hmm. And then at 19, we'll finish off with plus two constitution. After that, we'll be getting Ben Luck, and then one of my favorites, Controlled Chaos. This really shows her experience and knowledge that allows her to manipulate her chaos, whether she's controlling it or just letting it all out. And what's really cool about Controlled Chaos is by multi-classing, this is gonna be your 20th level as a multi-class player. So it's kind of cool that the last thing we see her do in season one is she kind of unleashes her chaos. You can, and that implies that she's learned how to really manipulate her chaos. So it's cool that your capstone ability is this controlled chaos thing. It's very thematic. So if you want to play Yennefer, you're probably thinking about a lot of the visuals you've seen on that show. Um, so we handpicked some spells for you that kind of give you those visuals. This is in no particular order. It's, it's, we tried to stick to the order that you see them, but this is really just things you've seen wizards do in the show, particularly Yennefer. So the first spell we see her cast is Teleport. If you want to think of another visual, it's when she's doing the kind of discount Doctor Strange thing in the desert. Uh, <laughs> no sling ring needed. That's going to help you get sort of her mobility around the world. Next up, we've seen wizards. This isn't necessarily Yennefer. She does kind of cast some defensive magic, but we see wizards do like that, uh, like when the guy's defending the castle from the Nilfgaardians. Surprise, mother That's probably Wall of Force. Another thing we see Yennefer do a lot, uh, at least in, in combat, is kind of mm. freeze people. That's hold person. Mm -hmm. And I think you can upcast that to kind of target multiple people. So we've seen her do exactly that, especially on the dwarves when she, they're going to, to kill the... Uh, <laughs> And they're trying to get out of it. Yeah, that was hilarious. And then this one isn't necessarily as nearly as powerful as what she does, but the closest visual I can think of to the last thing that she does, the big firestorm, is burning hands. You might be able to work with your DM or something on creating, like customizing a higher level version of that, or when you upcast it, maybe say you could say it looks like that. Next up, we would do lightning bolt. This was to kind of describe when they were trying to catch the lightning in the bottle. She was essentially a bottle. It kind of charged her and she was about to kill another student with a lightning bolt before Taseya stopped her. We also have a major image that we do see and tell that she wants attention, she craves it, and she definitely just makes the illusion that she's getting it. Next up, we have probably my favorite one of hers is Charm Person or Mass mm -hmm. Suggestion. We definitely see that during Geralt's and Yennefer's first encounter on how she has pretty much all the town and They're another down. not suitable for work They're getting down. scene. <laughs> and aside from that, she's staying in the mayor's private manner. Mm -hmm. So you would use yeah. charm person in order to do that, even with the guard who guards, who guards it when Geralt first gets there and gets hit in the head with a big sack of gold, which is probably one of the funniest things I've actually ever seen in that show. But money opens all doors. Mm. 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 
<laughs> so it does. And if we want to actually get away a little bit from the show fitting, Yennefer in the game has done some pretty oh my goodness spells. Two that really come to mind that would correlate to D&D would be Erupting Earth. And then when she's puts up a huge like wall of force to defend a castle where Geralt was trained, would be Autoluke's Resilient Sphere. That would be one of the perfect spells to match that one. So with all that, let's look at the finished product of Yennefer. What you have is a relatively versatile caster because you get a lot of spells from even just taking six levels of wizard. So you do get the versatility of being a spell caster. And you also get the ability to protect your friends and damage your enemies. So our finished product here is a pretty strong build, I think. A lot of times you have to kind of make some sacrifices as a multi-class character. But if you're using the multi-class spell list, that helps you still gain access to ninth level magic. So you don't have to sacrifice your higher level spells. It's just you have to keep track of, the, of a different spell list. That's the only con about this thing is that you have to keep track of that. The rest of it is pretty powerful. With high charisma, you're going to have some advantages in roleplay situations. Mm -hmm. If you want to persuade or deceive NPCs, um, you're going to be pretty powerful because you've got high spell casting modifiers. A lot of your spells are going to be very effective, especially your sorcerer spells. You're going to get some diversity from being a wizard and sorcerer. Sorcerer is going to give you your meta magic options. Evocation is going to give you your sculpting spells ability. We have a kind of effective, utilitarian, and combat strong class. So I think that this is a, a really good build. Did we miss anything? Is there anything we need to add to this build? Let us know down in the comments. Yeah, and if you play it, let us know if it was any fun. Did it, Was it cool to actually bring Yennefer in a D&D &D setting? Mm -hmm. You never know. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you haven't already, toss a subscribe to your local Witcher. Also, don't forget that we're actually on many social media platforms. So go give us a follow and see how our week looks like. And until next time, as always, just remember to roll with it. <laughs>